Hi everyone, Core just introduced the damageable object interface. We're going to take a look how to use that in conjunction with vehicles. I'm starting from a blank project, and the first thing I want to do is from Core Content search for the rifle. We can use the basic rifle, the advanced rifle, it doesn't matter really very much. Uh, we just add that to the floor, and the player can pick it up and shoot around. Then let's look at uh, some of the damageable objects that come with core. Uh, in core content, there is the damageable crate, damageable fire hydrant, and damageable barrel. And you can examine these to see how they're put together. If you think uh, their effect is interesting, you would like to learn more about them. They spawn these different templates when they die, and they each have slightly different settings. So let's take a look. Pretty neat. Next, let's add the vehicle. So I'm deleting those and we're going to search here for truck and I'm going to add the red truck. Hit play. And you'll see that I can shoot as much as I want at the truck and Nothing happens, I'll run out of ammo, the truck doesn't explode or anything, the truck isn't really taking damage. If you click on the vehicle, it can be other vehicles as well, it doesn't have to be the truck. You scroll to the bottom in the properties view, you will see the damageable section. And vehicles start with this immortal flag check, so you have to uncheck that and then check this destroy on death if you want the vehicle to go when it, when it dies and give it some basic hit points. In this case, 200, I think is pretty good. Anything between 100 to 100. Let's hit play and see what happens. So it seems like it worked, but it's pretty lame, right? Nothing really happens um, when it explodes. So let's add a cool explosion to it. Let's bring the barrel back. And it's a damageable barrel, hazard barrel. And it's got this uh, explosion effect. We can click this button here to locate the barrel in the project content. So now we can delete it. And with the truck selected, we can drag the barrel explosion to that slot right there, the client context spawn. We don't want the, the networked one. Let's see. There we go, that was pretty easy. But to make this explosion really kick, there is a, a example script here in the core API, uh, docscoregames.com, damageable object section is a new section. And if you come back down here to this died event, you can copy um, this script. It has a server section, it has a client section. We're going to create two different scripts under the truck. Right-click the truck, save the instances object. And then it has these server and client groups. You can right-click and say create script. And we're going to call it uh, scatter. Call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it mesh on death uh, server. So scatter mesh on death server. Double-click that, paste, and delete the client section because this is the server script. So we only want the server section in this one. And then here in the client context, right click, create a new script, and the scatter mesh on death client. I like to put always the same name and then suffix the name with client or server. Whenever there is a pair of scripts, one goes into the server folder, one goes into the client group, uh, it makes it really easy in the project content to um, figure things out if you have a problem. So in the client one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to paste that thing we copied from the website and then delete the server section this time. So this one has the client script, the other has the server script. I'm going to run it and see if we did it correctly. It should work. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So the pieces of the truck scatter everywhere, right? And um, this is a script that you can add to um, any damageable object that has kit bashed pieces like this, you know, in the geometry. Um, because 
they're going to just uh, fly all over the place. Um, the script, the, the client script is going to search the hierarchy for all the pieces and turn their physics on and stuff like that. But what we should test is if this works in multiplayer preview. So we turn on multiplayer preview here. You should always test uh, each feature that you develop in multiplayer preview because single player preview is for productivity, but it can lie to you sometimes. It's not exactly the same as what the players will see after you publish the game. So in multiplayer preview is a much more realistic representation of, of, the, of your game. There we go. So it still worked the same, I think. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Now the last thing I want to do is uh, for players when they are inside this vehicle and people are shooting at the vehicle, they take damage and if the vehicle explodes, they, they die, right? Or they take a lot of damage with the explosion. Maybe they survive, but probably not. Uh, so in order to do that, the first thing I want to do is I want to add a nameplate. And the reason I'm adding a nameplate is because it makes it really easy to tell who's your ally and who's your enemy. So if I add the nameplates component that is from core content, I increase the multiplayer preview to two players. Now it's going to spawn two windows, one for each player. We will be able to see if it gave us an ally or an enemy. In this case, it looks like they're both friendly because of the blue color on the bar. So we can hit that button to spawn a third uh, third player. And it looks like everyone is getting spawned on the same team. And the reason for that is because we only have one spawn point. And the spawn point is set to spawn everyone on team one. So what you can do is really easy. Control W to duplicate the spawn point. And then change the team on that to two. And you'll see that here uh, the team two is colored red and the team one is colored blue. And um, you can separate them a little bit like that, just to make things a little cleaner. And now players will get spawned on one or the other spawn point, and they will inherit the team number of the spawn point that they go to. So both of those spawned on that one spawn point, and then we can add a third person who will most likely be in the other point. Yeah, there we go. So... Here we can test it with a weapon. We can uh, damage them, right? And you saw their health bar go down. And if they climb into the vehicle, and you can drive it around. Uh, but this person right here, they can shoot. So the vehicle exploded and the person didn't take any damage from that, right? So let's fix that part. Last thing we need to do is here in the server context, we need to add a new script so that you can get from the vehicle section. Or here you can click on, uh, let me show you how to do that. Uh, vehicle. And then you can search here in the, this where it says driver in the examples, table of content on the right. Uh, this script right here applies damage to the driver. And you can copy that. And we right click server group and create a new script. We we'll call the script uh, vehicle damage driver. In this case, we don't have to suffix the name of the script with server. Because there's only one script, it, it goes on the server side. Uh, there's no corresponding client script in this case. So we paste the, the script in there. You can study this later uh, to learn how it works. But let's try that one more time and see if we did everything correctly. So the person who's in the vehicle should take some damage. There's a 50-50 chance of them uh, taking damage. You can tune that percentage it's in the script. It's one of the properties in the script. So each time you shoot, there's a 50% chance that the damage yeah, gets passed on to the person. And there's also a damage reduction uh, percentage, kind of like an armor on the vehicle, that it passes less damage down. And then when it explodes, it deals a fixed amount of damage to them. So yeah, they died this time from the explosion. And that's it for this video. This is a really short one. It shows how to do damageable objects with uh, vehicles. But that, like you saw, there is the crate, there is the 
barrel. There's other types of damageable objects. So there's a lot to explore. It is an interface, which is a new concept in Core. And I think we're going to see a lot more out of that interface in the future. So I'll see you guys next time.